It's the week of Monday, the 15th of January, and we have got lots of AI news to catch up on this week. What's happening at Google? What's happening with Alexa? And a little company you might have heard of called Walmart. Let's get into it. This is this week's AI forecast. This week on the forecast, we are starting off with some news coming out of Google. And unfortunately, it's not great news. Google have just announced that they have cut hundreds of jobs in the engineering and other divisions, according to reporting both here from the New York Times and many other sources. There have been quite big cuts happening in the Google Assistant product area, and that goes across both software and also the hardware that goes with it, including the Nest Hub division and also what's been happening with Pixel Phone. Now, of course, not great news if you have been working at Google. This, of course, follows lots of trends we've already seen in past weeks and really months, to be honest, of the tech layoffs happening across Silicon Valley and around the world. And the world of AI is not only changing the way in which we get work done, but how many people we seem to require to do that work. And whilst that is a challenge for us in the creative industries, it seems that tech is not immune to this problem either. Google saying here that they had laid off hundreds of workers in several de uh, divisions on Wednesday night last week, the middle of uh, CES. I think they were probably hoping this news was going to go under the radar, but hasn't seemed to happen. And in particular, it seems to have uh, affected the Google Assistant area. Now, to be clear, I don't think this is entirely surprising. We've seen that the Google Assistant features have been dead over the past couple of years, including the shutdown of the Google Action Framework, which allowed you to build Alexa skill style applications that ran on the Google Assistant. That has gone. And we've also seen a much more focus on the world of Android. And of course, with everything that's happening in the world of LLMs, Jim, um, Gemini and other updates uh, notwithstanding, Google Assistant isn't really a standalone product in the way in which it's been thought of historically. So maybe this is not entirely surprising, but still not good news. And obviously we wish well to all of the Googlers that have been affected by this. Of course, let us know if you want to share your story. Next up, it has been a massive week once again over in Las Vegas for the Consumer Electronics Show CES 2024. It was AI everywhere this past week. If you want to check out my previous video about the Rabbit R1, which kind of stole the show, you can go and find that over at the link in the comments. But one of the big players this week and this year is going to be Amazon. Of course, they are making massive strides. Now, Amazon is not new to the world of AI, certainly not new to the world of CES. And their booth had a lot to show this year about where their future direction is going. So let's take a look at what they announced. As reported here by voicebot.ai, hi to Brett and the team. This Alexa showcase this year showed off the new generative AI capabilities that they have uh, previously been trailing at the Alexa live events that came out in 2023. Now, we've known for some time that a lot of developers have been invited into developer previews to give this a try, and they showcased three experiences from Character AI, Volley, and Splash. The first up is the Character AI demo, which is probably the most impressive of all of them. Character AI, of course, is not an Alexa-only product but is an application platform that allows you to build essentially what they call synthetic people, both historical and fictional characters being able to be created, as you can see in this demo. Character AI allowed us to create these fictitious synthetic characters. They've got examples like Socrates, for example, or Tesla, Nikola Tesla, not anything to do with it. And now on the Alexa skill, you're able to interact with over 25 of these unique voices and have conversations with them in a much more fluid way. This is using the Alexa LLM technology that allows you to bring your own data, your own APIs, your own characters and content to the Alexa platform and interact with them in a real time way that previously was quite difficult to do. As we know, if you've used Alexa before, it's much more of a one in one out type dialogue. But now with this new operation, you're able to have much more of a generative AI type experience, more like chatting to a GPT. And now with character AI, you can tap into many of these new types of services. Worth noting, these are again only available in the US. The second demo was from our friends at Volley who showed off their new experiences 20 questions in this generative mode rather than it being reliant upon that kind of input output making sure you always get it right with what you're asking and answering which has been difficult for gameplay up until now on the Alexa device you're able to have this more immersive experience and uh, using 20 questions you can see in the demo here actual kind of milestone of being able to talk to something in a realistic way you're able to ask it much more open-ended questions and answers and have a more natural kind of gameplay experience. The third came out of a company called Splash, which was funded through the Alexa Fund, which is part of uh, the broader Alexa program. And here you can see the demo of the Splash music skill, which basically allows you to 
decide on a, a kind of musical category that you want to create and then go ahead and create a song using lyrics and singing along and, and making a whole composition within the experience. So something quite cool, I think quite a niche play if I'm honest, but you know, certainly demonstrates the technology really well. And again, it comes back to the overarching point here of what Amazon are trying to communicate, which is that you can have a more interactive experience with Alexa than ever before because you're able to have this generative AI experience. So that was Alexa at CES. And finally, we've got some AI news and comes from one of the big brand players in this space, Walmart in the US, led by Dominique Essig, who's a dear friend of ours. She has launched an amazing program and team over there within Conversational AI. And this week they had demonstrated their new generative AI capabilities at CES. Let's take a look. Walmart demonstrated their new generative AI search and AI replenishment features at the show in Vegas this past week. What does that mean? You might want to understand. What this now means is that using generative search or search powered by essentially a large language model, you're able to have a more open dialogue with the cart in the Walmart app. So being able to go and ask for a series of different items or be able to ask more question based requirements. Here you can see in this demo, the person is using the app says, give me a help with planning a football watch party and generated by AI, it comes up with a bunch of different suggestions from the Walmart product catalog and starts allowing you to build your basket, which I think is a really interesting way of approaching shopping and search. We often do the regular weekly grocery shop, but we also plan for all sorts of different occasions. So I think this could be really helpful. I'm sure we'll see many more grocery retailers go in this direction. The other part of the demo that they showed off, the other part of the demo that they showed off is using AI to do predictive modeling to do run of the products that you most regularly order, which is similar to the dash replenishment that Amazon has previously done. And using AI, they're now able to make this a little bit more smart. The other thing that Walmart showed off was their virtual try-on service using these virtual avatars and being able to get some feedback as well. So I think lots of interesting things coming out of this sector. Retail is one of these most ripe for disruption, but it's also the most complicated to deal with because you've got large product catalogs Lots of things that have similar names and brands to differentiate between. So it can be quite a, a struggle to get going in this space. But I think Walmart are doing a great job demonstrating what they are up to here. Okay, that's it for this week's forecast. Hope you found that helpful. Some stories for you to go dig into. You'll find links to them in the comments below. If you've been watching this for a couple of weeks now and you've got thoughts or feedback, then do let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you're watching over on YouTube, I would love it if you would hit the little like button or click subscribe so you get these videos in your inbox on a weekly basis. That's all for now. I'll see you next week for another forecast and some other videos in between. Take care.